We uh, certainly loved work. Having he came with bearing us, but, uh, bad news to a town set for solar. We have to abandon the project. South Hero pledged support for a 15 acre, one and a half megawatt solar project. But now Vermont Electric Cooperative can't do it. A wetland at the site raised environmental concerns. We support community based solar siting. The utility's CEO, Dave Hallquist, pitched another plan, a bigger, 50 acre project in a different location. VEC would partner with a big developer. There are large solar developers who do a good job, who can afford to take that kind of risk. Paul Quist's so known for striking deals. And it would cost our members more money. A smart businessman at the forefront of innovative energy projects. We have very advanced technology. A respected leader. The benefits of net metering. Pitching in when the lights go out. We prioritized our outages. The town moderator in Hyde Park. And now he wants to be known. Christine Hallquist is. As someone else. Who I really am. Dave Hallquist is transgender, basically born with a male body and a female mind. I would never want to go to my grave knowing that I didn't tell the world about this. Hallquist says the need to finally live the truth stems from a dark place, a place of suffering. He was bullied and beaten as a child by classmates, by nuns, who he says demanded an exorcism on the eighth grader because he was different than the other boys. I learned early on that it would be not be acceptable to be Christine. To survive, he toughened up, started playing sports, and hid what was happening in his head. I learned to play the role very well. I've been playing it ever since. It worked. He fooled everyone in high school and college, and then met Pat, the love of his life. The pair married two years later, though Hallquist kept the painful secret. She's been amazingly supportive, but I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not the person she married. Several years after the wedding, Pat discovered Hallquist's hidden wardrobe of women's clothing. She was confused, confronted Hallquist, and considered leaving, but eventually chalked it up to a phase or a fetish, like cross-dressing just for fun, hoping it would pass. She stayed so long as no one else knew. We were going to keep this secret to our grave. She allowed Dave to dress as Christine in private. Alquist usually did so while playing the piano, alone. Pat didn't want to see it. Then came three kids, two girls and a boy. It's incredibly painful not to be your authentic self. I don't believe at all that transgender men and women have mental illness as a result of being transgender. Rachel Inker is a medical doctor running the Transgender Care Clinic at Burlington's Community Health Center. 300 trans patients have come here over the last 10 years, people in their late teens to senior citizens. People will often talk about years, often from childhood, of feeling that they are not in the body that they were intended to, that people don't see who they are. And it can be a very difficult process for people, filled with lots of loss, rejection, harassment. Counting the transgender population is challenging. The U.S. Census Bureau doesn't ask if someone is trans, and the number is not tracked by the CDC, and not everyone is out. But experts working with the trans community here in Vermont estimate the number to be around 1,400. That means for every 440 people you pass on the street, one identifies as transgender. You know, there's so much shame. There's so much lifetime of shame, lifetime of embarrassment, lifetime of trying. After years of hiding and periodic purging, tossing out his women's clothes, Hallquist couldn't live like that any longer. You, you try and you try and you try. And at some point you realize, I, I can't fight this. About five years ago, he told his kids. You know, at first there's obvious personal shock. This is a person that we're all around for the past 30 years of my life, in your 30s of your life, who's completely changing into a different person, and that's hard. And recognizing that it's hard, but then we keep coming back to the fact that we love each other. The family stuck together, and Hallquist's son, Derek, is documenting his father's transformation. But they all admit it's been tough, and still is. 
especially now that Hallquist's transition is further along. He's taking estrogen and testosterone blockers. He's changing and going public with his new identity. On this night, a first outing for Christine with a group of trans women she met through the advocacy group Pride Center of Vermont. A new outfit for the occasion, makeup, hair, jewelry, and a bit of fashion advice from Pat. She's working to make peace with what's happening and still support the person she's loved for so long. Thank you. No nerves, just excitement for Christine during the hour-long ride from her Hyde Park home to splash on the Burlington waterfront. I feel happy. Quickly, Christine found new friendships. About 40 people confirmed they're going to walk with Drinks turned to dinner and an invite for two of Christine's kids to join. In fact, I prefer now being out and hanging out with Christine because I can tell she's happy. But their hearts go out to their mom, Pat, back at home, who's struggling with the public revelation. We all agreed we're super worried about mom. The whole family is in group therapy. The marriage, though, in question. Yeah, I know Johnson very well. Yeah, of course. We're very lucky in that we've had each other in this. What's your biggest fear in coming out publicly? My biggest fear now is for my wife and family. Um, and how they continue, you know, how they adjust. When, when you've loved and lived with somebody for 35 plus years, forgive me, I think I'm gonna start to cry. I, I love my wife dearly. And it's not, not even, it's not a love, I don't want, I don't need to hang on to her. I just know that this, who, this, this of course it's a struggle for the for spouses of transgender folks. Deciding to transition takes an enormous amount of courage. It is not something that people do impulsively. It's often many years of struggling with gender dysphoria, a discomfort or depression resulting from a body that doesn't feel like is their own. Now I've allowed myself to be who I am. Hormone therapy, surgeries to look more feminine or complete sexual reassignment surgery are options during transition. Will I ever go all the way? I don't know. Christine's not sure how far into her transition she'll go. My brain believes I'm a woman. You know, I, 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 I'm, a, I'm a woman. And I know that's really hard when you stare at somebody like myself who has all the physical body parts of a man. You'd say, how can you be a woman? You know, get that out of your head. <laughs> you know, that's what a lot of people say, get over it. Oh, sorry, I can't. <laughs> yeah, that's who I am. I, I can't get over this. At 59 years old, that once scared little boy is becoming the woman she hoped and prayed to be. Now that it's no longer a secret, it's just incredibly peaceful. So will we see Dave Halquist in a suit and tie again? Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> that's, what, that's, my, that's my costume. <laughs> Do I see someday walk into the legislature as a woman? Maybe, you know, I, I'd love to see that day.